All right, guys, thought I'd do a video on this channel. As I've said, I've been sort of trying to work out what the, this channel should focus on these days. Originally, it started off with the Philippines. And I think it's a bit unfair that I come up with stuff um, around the Philippines now since I've been out of the country for so long. Um, one of the things to be aware of, I've bought one of these little devices that's got like face tracking. So if I turn this way, for example, it automatically just moves around. So when I do hand gestures, it picks it up. So apologies for that. Um, so I think the the focus on the channel is going to be more around personal development. Um, I want to cover a few topics today because um, I was talking with a couple of guys yesterday, and it's it's a bit. I don't know. I think. For me, I don't realise how much influence some of the, the stuff I do actually has. And then people, I bump into people. Um, and the guys yesterday were quite interesting. I don't, you know, they're not long-term followers. or um, One of the guys probably doesn't even know the channel exists. But the topics were relevant. And one of the other guys had actually started watching some of the videos on the MGTOW stuff. Um, and see, for me, MGTOW's more about personal development anyway. Um, this is where a lot of the problems we have in society is a lack of ability to understand someone else's perspective. It's often about what you think and how somebody does this or does that, and not why they're doing it, which is often the bit that's the most important because that information actually defines what's the root cause or I think something positive something negative doesn't really matter but the point is it's multiple perspectives now one of the things I want to talk about today is resentment because um, resentment is one of those things that if you resent someone else it, it's something that is going to keep eating at you it's going to be an issue it's going to be a problem is something the negative focus is something that has no positive value um, and a lot of the time what I would say is actually look at why do you resent whatever it is is it because somebody's done better than you well if they've done better than you in education or whatever guess what you need to focus on not moaning about it improving your education a lot of the stuff's very, very obvious. Um, I mean, myself, you know, if you ask me what what bothers me most, um, I mean, do I resent anybody? No. Um, I moved past all this stuff probably in my 30s when you weren't realised the value of life. Um, don't get me wrong, I suffer with the same issues everybody else gets, dictatorship, um, by businesses etc you must do I need this all that sort of stuff that's that's just life it's how you let it affect you is the important bit um, so there is limits even for a business on how far it can push you so for example if you're constantly being pushed to work longer hours longer hours longer hours try and rein it in I know it's not easy because companies like feeding on that. It's a, it means that um, if they're dumping half their work on you, they're not having to do it. So when they go home early or on time and you're working late, that's because you're doing their job for them. That's the reality. But should you resent it? No, you should do something about it. You go, my contract is this. What happens if I let it fail? Um, I think Jordan Peterson's brought this up recently, in fact in the last probably, probably October I think it was. Because um, I think that the US is currently going through a mass resignation issue. I think nearly 3% of the population are going no and resigning. That's not because these people are stupid or um, short sighted. It's the COVID that's allowed them to reevaluate their lives. Now I did this in my 30s I went off to the Philippines because when I went, was in 
the um, standard life. I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot more money than most people do. And I keep coming back to that because I, I don't... I've earned well for a long time. So I'm often shocked on how much people live on or how much they spend on food bills and stuff because in my house we don't even think about the cost so I'll just leave that there I mean we we, we enjoy food that's one of the things we um, do but I used to go to work every day I want to say every day seven days a week I used to do call outs so I could do um, like nine to well seven till seven till five then get called out at three o'clock in the morning work from three o'clock till seven in the morning then go to work at eight o'clock and carry through the day. And I did that for a long period of time. Plenty of money. No social life. <laughs> no. Um, health and fitness wasn't on the top because you was tired or working. Um, my personal relationship suffered with it. Um, not as bad as it should have done, to be fair. Um, my partner at the time. Um, it's understanding, to be fair. Um, so that's one thing I will say. Was uh, I recognise my own flaws. Mine is I commit to something and run it till it's finished. But one of the things I recognise over time, it's pointless in these way um, scenarios because your sacrifices are more than your gain. There is no end. It's a bloody hamster wheel. It just keeps churning and churning. So you've got to rein it in. I want to spend time with the kids. Um, like for example every Thursday going to judo or something. Well guess what? Put it in your calendar. I want to go, we need you to work Thursday. Sorry. Um, my uh, hours are 9 till 5. I've got judo at 6. Um, no. I'm already pre-booked. And over time, you'll find you can rein some of that in. Don't get me wrong, they will still press and push where they can. Um, but ultimately, you start to gain some of your life. But one of the things I recognised a long time ago was the valuation between what you're doing and how you get there. Because a lot of it is you're trying to progress. And often you won't progress because, like, works dumped on you so you don't spend time on your education you don't do courses you don't evolve your um, current role into the next next one up or even move four roles or switch into a different career you lock yourself into it because you're constantly busy so one of the key things is is sitting out sitting down and working out where, where you want to be me it was the house in spain we've already got it we're now about 8% renovated. At that point, that is a foot coming off the accelerator. Because I can consult at this point. Um, because consultancy, I earn as much as I do in a full-time role. But I no longer need the paperwork to actually get a mortgage. Because I've already got one. Um, so the point being is, you evaluate where you need to go, what you need to do, etc. So when you're seeing somebody taking all your time away from you, well, we're off again, um, recognize that that time is yours. And some people become quite defensive on this. I remember um, somebody I did a training course with. He was a bank, senior bank manager at RBS, uh, not RBS, Lloyds Bank actually. And he was explaining to me um, about people wasting your time because he used to he was very very on the ball he hated it you know like in the sense of when somebody did a telesales call to him and they'll go you know thank you for your time type thing he said no you didn't need to phone me I'm, you haven't got a sale you've wasted my time are you going to give me those six minutes of my life back the answer is no and that may sound very specific, but without a doubt, looking for somebody else's perspective, something's triggered that in his life. Now, whether he had a nervous breakdown, whether his wife got sick or whatever, that comes from something that recognised 
his time being wasted. Um, the value of time. And time is one of the key things you have very limited resource on it. So money doesn't matter. Big car doesn't matter. Big house doesn't matter. Um, now you may think, well, yeah, but you've just bought a house in Spain. That's my legacy for my kids. It's, it's the home for my wife. If I die tomorrow, they've now got a foothold for a permanent um, ability to look after themselves. Now, I know some of you guys are very 100% anti all that stuff. That's fine. But for me, that's a big weight off my own shoulders. And you go, well, there's the mortgage on it. It's insured. <laughs> the property's insured. I die. The house gets paid off. Don't worry about it, guys. It's taken care of. Um, so the point being is that that bit for me has been the key goal. Um, I put up with a lot of crap to get from A to B. But what you'll find is you've got to have the A to B. If there's nowhere you're going with your life, that's what you need to focus on. Because um, not point putting up the crap. If there's nothing here, where are you going with it? What are you doing with it? Um, this is why goals are so important. Because without them, there's nothing. You're just on the hamster wheel. It's never going to stop. Now, you probably ask me, well, you may want to ask me, what's my next goal? Well, my next goal... I've been looking at other properties and financial investments. And then I weigh up another property costs X. What's the return between this property and just putting the money in good investments? And you're finding it's like that. Now, properties give more security in the sense of it's bricks and mortar. But financially, a little bit more risk. Um, but the rewards are higher. So at the moment, I'm going to start funneling um, once we've finished the move. Because <laughs> at the moment, I've got three properties. Um, once we've finished the move, all my excess money is going into investments for the next six months um, to try and churn that money. Because um, I'm on a five-year plan. I'm, I've got three years left on that at the minute. I'm a year behind, thanks to COVID. Um, but ultimately, we're getting back on track. Ultimately, I want to be in a position where you can offer sustainable income for my, my family, because that then takes the pressure off me, because this is all bit you often people don't recognize is, if you can remove some of um, the pressures that you have on life, or that life's have on you, life gets easier. People prodding you to do more for them to benefit their business, etc. Or could be family relationships with peer pressure, parents, all that sort of stuff, wanting you to do more. Um, but ultimately, life's looked at the wrong way. And that's the bit you've got to look at, because often it's your perspective that's wrong. Um, I know this all sounds a bit all over the place today but I just want to sort of get this out on the air um, currently the media climate is pos uh, constantly negative it's always about like it, uh, the COVID currently now we're talking about the environment impact um, the um, the corruption in politics but generally two of those three are always the same. You, they, they come up constantly in the media. The COVID one, it'll be under a different name next year. It'll be bird flu or something else, but the three horses of the apocalypse are regular. Um, but also, your car's not new enough. Your house isn't big enough. You don't earn enough. Your skin's the wrong colour. Um, you're not educated enough. Somebody's better than you. Um, you should aspire to be blah, blah blah. When in reality, what makes you happy? What makes you content? What do you want to do with your life? Set some goals. Recognize when you wake up. There's always something around you that is worth the time of day. Now uh, I've got to admit, over here in Northampton, the sky is always grey. Well. 
a lot of the time, especially when I look out this window. But if I spin around, I'll try not to knock, knock this over. Let me, is it going to turn now? But I've got my plants. Oh, it's not going to do it because it's going to keep resetting on my face. Uh, it's not resetting on my face. No. <laughs> not a, uh, not something else. Um, but the point is, put plants there. It brightens it up. Put some life in the room. And this is only a small space, but this isn't home. Spain's home. Worked hard to set Spain up. Same as when I went out to the Philippines, worked hard to set the Philippines up. But getting to the Philippines all started with the recognition that in the UK, I dropped into the rut. I dropped into the society norms, make money, car, house, um, live day to day, keep your head down, just focus on making more money. Not enjoying life, not experiencing life, not trying new things, not trying to uh, explore or um, get a greater understanding of the world. It was shut up, put up and drive forward. And often that's, that is the security net driven by society. What I learned from dropping it all and walking away and went off to the Philippines is you don't need it and this is this is the big uh, resignation thing in America at the moment they recognize they don't need it because working from home cars been stuck in the drive for nearly a year or whatever because of the COVID don't need to lease a car quite content working from home or in fact realizing that nearly everything could be done from home but also it means you can go for a walk in the park also means that you get more time with your family you manage your time better because even if you want to work long hours with kids in the house it often becomes very difficult so your time management improves when I went out to the Philippines it was like a sigh of relief when I got to um, just coming over into Cebu. Um, the plane sort of coming down. It was daylight. I could see all the palm trees. I could see all the. Um, like, there was like the little fishing fishing nets and stuff out on the um, the waters and the green land as you saw coming it's weather fields don't get me wrong Cebu or city once you get there it's hectic but as you're coming in it's, it's still fairly fairly undeveloped it's up on uh, map time and it just instantly felt like home now bear in mind I hadn't even worked out how I was going to make a living yet I hadn't even worked out uh, what I was going to do next but there wasn't one worry in my head because the first thing was this feels like home um, and from there we managed to do alright for 8 years out in the Philippines built a call centre up built peso peso um, arcade machines uh, currently we've got um, a Wi-Fi business that is currently um, developing in the Philippines and a water station you know purified water um, we rent apartments out would I have done that if I'd stuck to the same 9 to 5 nonsense which was often like I said 7 days a week can't really plan anything in case you get called out the answer to that is no but I was driving along the motorway going up to Birmingham one day I just thought I don't want to be here this is me, this is my life this isn't life, this is existing and I did something about it now, don't get me wrong it could all go badly wrong and for some people it does but the worst thing I would have 
is if I hadn't changed anything, I could have still been in that same life now. Now don't get me wrong, I drop back into corporate life now and again. Um, but those sacrifices are part of life in the sense of what's your goal, head for the goal, keep your head down and just blink all the nonsense out. Um, that's what that's what you need to focus on. What's your exit strategy? If you want out of it, are you happy doing what you're doing? Well, then you, you're happy. But if you're not, do something about it. I mean, I've got some friends of mine that I've tried to help for years. Um, and some of them are quite peculiar in the sense of they know what they need to do. But just don't do it. You know, for example, I say go to night school, study online. I mean, you've got YouTube now. You've got so much knowledge around you, often free. Do something. But it's like, I don't have the time. It gets back to the first bit I was saying about other people using all your time up. That's not right. For me, that's uh, modern slavery almost. Um, you need to take some control of some of your time back. Because you need it. Your life's only so long. Why are you giving it away? When you're dead, who will remember? It doesn't matter what job it is. Unless, unless you're uh, building villages out in Colombia or um, Africa or somewhere. But even then, after your death, you may get a statue. But it won't be long until people are asking, who's that statue of? <laughs> who's, who's that statue of? time moves on but you've only got so much limited time yourself um, hence five year plan five year plan for me was the commitment to get where I need to go and get out because I know this uh, environment is not a positive one I know this environment um, is often a environment that has no career path beyond my current knowledge unless I go back to consulting but we'll keep that we'll keep that to ourselves at the minute um, but ultimately I recognize where things are wrong and what is right I recognize that you know people say oh you can't make a lot of money in Spain you're right a lot of time you can't but there are some people I know that do really well and there are some people that struggle. And the bizarre thing is, I know it's the same in the Philippines as to Spain, often foreign nationals. Um, they would rather be there with nothing than go back to um, their home countries. And it's not because they're uh, being negative, it's actually the opposite. The, they're happy where they are, even with very, very little. Going back to where they come from, it's often because of the environment they come from. Whether it's a negative society, a materialistic society, or like um, what I found find in Spain, is because you're on the coast, where we are, um, the average age is I think about 68 or something like that um, but because everyone's retired or the majority are they've got less stress in their lives they've gone through having kids having to buy a house having to do XYZ the environment is more about what we're going to go out and do go and do Tai Chi at the beach or go and do this spend time with the grandkids it's a relaxing environment the negativity is out of it. Very little stuff. Um, the only time I see negative stuff really on, the, on Spain is because we live in along a strip on the coast. People go, oh, I don't want to live in a concrete jungle. It's such a small development. You've got the sea on this side and salt lakes on the other. Um, plus, you're 45 minutes from airports. Um, it's in the tourist spots. So you've got water parks, um, safari parks. Um, go karting, pony trekking, ridiculous amount of facilities. 
and some very good health care. If the only focus is on the fact that they're 80s build, I'm not bothered about that. I've been out in the Philippines where people are living in shacks and struggling to pay the rent. So if that's all they can complain about, guess what? It must be a great area. In the Philippines, I see a lot of people with nothing. I mean, really nothing. To the point that they may not have, say, three meals a day. But still smiling, still happy, still content, living day to day. And so when you go and visit people, they're happy that you took the time to visit them. Their evaluation of life is very, very different. Hence, the importance of perspective. Because I may be doing better than them financially, but it's not that they're not focused on their finances. The only ones that are focused on finances are normally ones trying to um, keep up with you, outdo you, and generally not positive. <laughs> so, but when you surround yourself with people that are just happy in your company, you're in the right place. But anyway, if you want to put any comments in this video, appreciate it. Um, if you want more types of this type of video, please comment. Tell me what you want to talk about. Um, but I do think it's important that we sort of get the message off over that the way of being locked into life at the moment for many doesn't need to be permanent. Um, okay, COVID restrictions does make it a bit harder at the minute, but um, it's, it's a bit like with Jay out in Australia. Jay's just waiting so he can actually start travelling again. Um, financially, he's done well. Um, I'm not going into his finances, but he's done well. And I've been looking at my investments, and I'm going to be pulling some money out of that as well myself. But ultimately, think out of the box. Look at the perspectives. Look at it from other people's angles. Um, I mean, I used to see this quite a lot with... Uh, what's his name? Is it Glenn? Might have been Glenn. Glenn used to have um, a thing he used to say in the office where he would get somebody, predominantly females, um, well, it was always females, and they'd be like that, giving him a load of stick, and he says, Don't talk to me like I'm your husband. And they'd be sort of thrown back by that. But it's quite a common thing and one of the things I realise over time is a lot of people take crap from work to home um, if you haven't read it already I do recommend and there is an audio book for free on YouTube um, of how to win friends and influence people recommend reading it or listening to it very good um, book um, but one of the perspective things is about like a child trying to speak to his father. His father's got him from work, he's tired, sort of shouts at the kid, sends him off to bed. But ultimately, the kid only wants to spend time with his father. And it's recognising that your work life had influenced your home life. Separate them. Um, you need to... You know, if you need to wind down before going home, because I know a lot of guys have really crap jobs, and, and women as well, sorry. I say guys, should I say it with a Z, because that's then fully inclusive of any degree of what anybody wants to call themselves these days. Um, but you need to go back home in a better space. And if your partner is the coming home negative, then who, what, or whatever they want to call themselves, I do recommend having a conversation and saying, look, bringing this home is not positive. It's, in, it's poisoning the home environment. Take it out. You know, if you're having a bad day at work, realise talking about it sometimes works, but ultimately you're better off keeping it out of the home. Really keeping it out of the home. Um, but ultimately... The, story, the moral of the story was the guy recognised that he needed to actually spend time with his kid 
um, who actually was making time to speak to his father and wanting to spend time with his father. And the rejection was not the child's fault. It was the father's fault for bringing his crap home. That is something that a lot of people are affected by. Um, I do think it's important to sort of pull that out because it also means the your work is toxic. Whether you want to admit it or not, there's a problem there. Um, I'll leave that one at that. But that's uh, how to win friends and influence people. Um, it's got some interesting insights that uh, is useful for everyday living. But getting back to the other side of that, Glyn and his comment about I'm not your husband because getting sort of snapped at is the fact of people bringing toxic issues at home back into the workplace. But where do you think a lot of them start? The workplace. <laughs> um, don't get me wrong, finances, all that, but it's one of the big ones for divorces and everything. It's all about money, etc., etc. But if you actually manage a lot of this stuff um, by not getting is being able to see that the problems are often um, A, not short term fixes, but B, maybe completely out of your control. You know, if, if one of you lost a job and your mortgage is going to be stretched for it while they find another job, guess what? What's the point of worrying about it? What are you going to do? You've just got to work, work your way through it. But there's no point in arguing about it. It's just life's hard, sort it move on take the knock take it head on just go okay I get it support you as much as I can um, it will eat away at the savings or whatever it is but we'll get there in the end it's a short term problem don't make long term problems from short term problems things can be things can happen in an instant you can have somebody die or um you need to cover somebody's medical or something. That's today. That's today. It may wipe your entire savings out. It may um, make life difficult for a while. But you know what? So what? You're still here. If you've saved somebody's life by sorting their medical out, isn't that more positive? <laughs> the money comes and goes. It always will do. Don't worry about it. Thanks for watching.